Ming Che Beats. Power at me. Right, yo, 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 yo. So, Mr. Lane is back here with a pasta rice timer app that we're going to build. So, whether you have used the first video or you are starting in this place, that means you've downloaded the template at this point and you're just using the template, and we're going to learn a little bit about coding. So, just so we can see what we already have loaded in, I'm just going to replace my class build here and just kind of show what we have in action at the moment here. Um, and let me bring back this and just make this lower screen. So I type pasta, we get nine minutes. I type rice and we get 15 minutes. So I tap them, boom, boom, and that's it, okay? So now what we wanna do is we want to create something that does a little bit more than just tells us how much time for each timer in the console. We want it to show up on the screen and everything. So first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of learn a little bit about um, different ways to kind of hold these pieces of data and then we're going to create a timer in this video, okay? So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a array, um, a dictionary actually. So we're gonna do let food array and we're going to equal and remember an array is going to be uh, straight brackets and the first item we're going to put in there is rice and we're going to add i'm sorry we're going to add a colon and we're going to set it to 15 minutes and then we're going to add in pasta and we're going to give it nine okay so basically what this does is this puts everything into an array and Obviously, there's really no point in doing it for, you know, the two items, but if you had, you know, let's just say that this, this timer had like 15 different things, 15 different options, you'd want to put it in an array. I think it'd be easier to, to, to grab from. Um, and then down here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to put this into this into a switch statement. Now, the switch statement this is more on a smaller scale. I wouldn't recommend doing it with two or three if statements, but I think anything, I think the rule is anything with five or more if statements is where a switch statement uh, would be more useful. So we're gonna switch the food type. We're gonna add curly braces and then we're gonna type case. And the case is basically gonna be the bowl of rice. And we're gonna have to use the image to show control command space bar. We'll pull this up. We're gonna put the emoji in, we're gonna add a colon, and what we're gonna do is we're just basically gonna take this, we're gonna copy, we're gonna paste that in there, we're gonna go down to the next line, go back, case, and we're going to also choose a pasta, we're going to do this, and then we're going to paste that in again, and then finally, for the final thing that we need, and these always have to have the final, it's kind of like the, kind of like the else, um, and, and you gotta have a default at the end. So in this case, we're going to put um, just an error. So we can know if none of these work, then we're gonna get an error. We can now get rid of this if statement here, and we're just gonna change this to be what's inside the food array. So food array, and then we're gonna pull the data from rice. And we're gonna copy this. We're gonna paste this in the middle. And we're gonna change this to pasta. Okay, now you're gonna notice we have these string interpolation produces a debug description for an optional value since there's optional values coming out of this array. We just need to force it. So just know that when you wanna print values outside of a of array or a dictionary, you need to force it, um, force unwrap it with an exclamation point. 
Now this would cause an error if it didn't know, but we know what's inside of it, so we can force it. And this will kind of be, you know, it's basically what you had started with looking a little bit different with different kind of uh, coding, okay? So this is kind of the stuff we're gonna start getting into. And it's gonna work the same way, but let's just test it always to make sure. Let's replace, bring it to the forefront here, and it should do the exact same thing, rice and pasta. Perfect. Okay, so now next thing we're gonna do is we are going to add a timer. So um, my recommendation is to, and I'm gonna just go back here, is I just looked up timer in Swift, okay? I chose the first option, the ultimate guide to timer, and I started reading through it, and we're looking at creating a repeating timer, one that repeats, um, and we can use it as many times as we need to. So we are going to grab this piece of data. We're gonna copy it. We are gonna throw it inside of our button because that's where we want it to start. We're gonna paste that down. And then we are also going to grab this objective C function. We're gonna copy that. And we are gonna place that not inside any other function, just kind of separately. Notice once we paste that down, this kind of gets rid of. Um, what we're also going to do is we are not going to declare the timer inside the button. We are just going to use it. We are actually going to declare it outside. So we are going to make a variable called timer and we are going to initialize it to the timer data type. Okay. So this is very important. We're not setting it to zero. We're not setting it to an int. We're setting it to timer, which then will be able to be utilized down here. Okay. Second thing, so also kind of going through here, we want to be able to keep track of what's going on. Um, so, you know, we're using this as a method. So we want to have the timer actually take place inside the Objective-C function, okay? So we got to set up a couple other variables. So we're going to set up a variable of total seconds. So that's going to keep track of the amount of total seconds we have. And then we're also gonna create a variable for um, seconds completed, which we're also gonna start at zero, uh, cause we're gonna kind of run and do this um, and, and take it down with the, eventually we're gonna make a progress bar here and we're gonna unfortunately need to utilize some multiple um, variables for that. And we need to run the timer. So all the timer information and adding on per second is gonna take place inside here. Okay, so now we need to get the timer to start counting down, okay? So we actually have to set that. And what this down here states is that the time interval is one second, okay? So every time we use the counter, it's gonna be an accurate one second. So we need to create an if statement here and we are gonna compare the total number of seconds versus the seconds completed, okay? So if total seconds, okay, is going to be greater than seconds completed, then it's going to add one to the timer. So we're gonna do seconds completed plus equals one, okay? And we also wanna print that out so we can make sure that it's working because obviously we wanna see that in the console. So we're going to do seconds completed, and then we can just say seconds, all right? And that gets the timer kind of working the way we want. And now we're gonna come down here and we need to, when the button is pressed, we actually need to set the total seconds. So we're gonna do that in each case. So we're gonna just gonna take total seconds here and we're gonna make that equal to the food array rice. Make sure that you keep the uh, exclamation point because you have to force it. And then we're gonna copy this and we're gonna paste this down here. And we're just gonna make sure we change this to pasta, okay? So now if we can take a look at this, when we start the app, it's going to start like this. We're gonna press a button, depending on which button we press, it's going to set total seconds to either nine or 15 and then it's going to start counting down and we're going to see if that works. So let's press play, let's replace. All right, and let's press the rice. 
one second, two second, three second. Okay, it looks like it works just fine. Um, and if we wanted to then jump over to, let's say we wanted to jump over to the pasta timer and it's not doing anything. And then if we switch back to here, it's not doing anything. So a couple issues and we can fix those really quickly. So we're gonna come back over here. And basically what's happening is that we, whenever we press the button, you know, time is still moving, time is still setting, time is still going to these things. So we have to reset them every time we press the button. So at the beginning, we should always do total seconds equals zero and seconds completed also equals zero. So then when we press the button, um, it'll work and reset and then start counting again. Okay, so now we're gonna set that up and we're gonna type the pasta or the rice and then we're gonna switch back over to the pasta and it starts over but notice that the counter gets faster and faster and faster every time that we click it. So there's still one more issue here, okay? And this is gonna get taken care of by a very quick timer dot invalidate. And this will invalidate the timer and basically reset like the time interval, okay? So now when we press play, we're gonna go back to replace and we should be able to click the rice timer and then click the pasta timer. It starts over and notice that the timer goes at the right time. So if somebody makes a mistake, somebody's not ready, they can click it again and it'll restart automatically to work exactly the way they need it to, okay? So a beautiful thing right here. Um, so at this point, we've got the timer set and I would like you to meet me on the next video to finish up what we're working on, get the progress bar working and then kind of finalize what the way everything should look at the end. See you in the next video.